Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Dr. Patty. I hope everyone is remembering that you are doing your best and that you are doing pretty well. Could we be doing better sometimes? Of course, but don't forget that you are putting in your all, especially in this current climate, especially in the situation that we are all in. We are all doing our best. And if you really look at things, we're doing pretty well. We're here together as a community, of course, to try to do better when we can, when we're able, but always to have compassion for ourselves and really just to be here to learn. So anything that Dr. Angela or I uh, explain to you or impart to you, just think of it as data and information and seeds that you're planting and that we're planting in ourselves as well. So today I wanted to talk a little bit more about blood sugar and blood sugar balance. We've done previous videos in the past about insulin resistance and managing blood sugar. However, with everything going on with the health crisis and just the state of the world these days, it is so vital that we work on balancing our blood sugar and keeping that blood sugar and that metabolic health as stable and steady as possible. So there's been a lot of talk in the news about things like diabetes or heart disease being underlying conditions, um, but don't I want to remind you not to think about these extreme cases, but to think about the average person walking around like you or me that is not in total pathology where we may have full-blown diabetes, but we may not be completely over here either where everything is totally in balance. And this is where blood sugar imbalance um, or dysglycemia tends to lie, sort of in this gray zone, I like to call it, where maybe our blood sugar is spiking a little bit higher than it should. Maybe it's not as resilient or flexible in terms of being able to come back down to baseline. Um, maybe it's a little bit dysglycemic, meaning it's kind of doing this up and down situation. So I wanted to talk to you about symptoms of imbalanced blood sugar, just a few general ones that you can keep an eye out for. And more importantly, so please stick with this video because I want to talk about the actual numbers that you should be looking for when measuring your blood blood sugar. Now, of course, I wouldn't be me and it wouldn't be naturopathic medicine if I didn't mention that this is, of course, very individual and depending on your particular situation, your um, past medical history, your health goals that you're trying to achieve, maybe you're actually trying to lose some weight, in which case that might be a different blood sugar marker that you're looking for than someone who's just trying to lower inflammation and stay as healthy as possible. So of course, everybody's different, but I'm going to give you some guidelines in this video today of what numbers to look for. So first and foremost, let's talk about just some general symptoms that you may have or you may have even noticed in yourself if your blood sugar is a little bit out of balance um, or a little bit up and down or maybe going up too quickly and then falling too quickly or it may rise, stay up there for a while and then crash. So blood sugar, like many um, factors in our body want to be wants to be stable and steady our bodies really I always joke with my patients like to be truly healthy our bodies actually like to live quite boring lives quote unquote but healthy is stay steady and stable and rhythmic um, and nice and even and that's what our bodies like and that's what blood sugar likes so if you're noticing kind of this um, and symptoms related to that it's uh, possibly an indicator that your blood sugar is not as healthy, not as balanced, and not as flexible. So some symptoms that are very common are that hangry feeling, that feeling of like, oh my God, I have to eat something right now, or I'm either going to bite someone's head off, I'm gonna yell at someone, I'm going to eat anything that I come across, or I might even faint, or have um, you know cold sweats, or feel jittery. So that's a sign that maybe your blood sugar is crashing. And what's interesting is, you know, I just talked about maybe your blood sugar goes up and then it doesn't come down as nice and smoothly as we would like. I have had that feeling before where I'm like, oh my God, I have to eat something right now. Um, I really feel like I'm gonna pass out possibly. I measure my blood sugar and my blood sugar is actually 
in a quite a normal zone. And the reason why sometimes this happens, even though you may feel it where your blood sugar is normal, it may mean that it was quite high not too long ago and it has come down very, very quickly. So nothing in our body is absolute. It's not all good, all bad. Um, you know, we talk about estrogen dominance, for instance, but that's can that can be in terms of a ratio compared to other hormone factors. So same thing with our blood sugar. It may be sitting in a very normal place, but in ratio to where it was just 30 minutes ago or an hour ago, it may have been really high and spiked very quickly. And then you're gonna feel that drop, even if it landed somewhere quite normal. So I have looked at my blood sugar and thought, oh, it's actually quite good. But I know because I probably knew what I ate before Beforehand or what my stress level was that my blood sugar was probably a little bit too high and then came down too quickly so feeling like you have to eat something you know right away um, feeling like you might pass out um, sometimes feeling like you really need to have some sugar after you eat maybe 30 minutes after you eat or craving dessert sugar after a meal sometimes that can be a blood sugar issue that can also be a neurotransmitter issue a serotonin issue um, you know there's other factors but it can definitely be a blood sugar issue sometimes sleep disruption um, not being able to stay asleep through the night can be an indicator that our blood sugar is not as stable as it should be. Um, and I may do a separate video down the road um, or even next week if you're interested. So please leave a comment below where we go a little bit more in depth in terms of um, how to actually treat some of these blood sugar imbalances or what may be causing. But today we'll just go over some of the symptoms. So sleep disturbances or not being able to sleep through the night is another one. Um, or even being hungry too often, you know, not being able to really satiate your appetite and never really feeling satisfied. Um, I do find that when blood sugar is nice and even, appetite is also nice and even. And you get hungry, you know, very normal, intuitive hunger, but you don't feel any kind of urgency about it or um, just feeling like you are insatiable or that you just can never feel satisfied. So those are some um, quite general and typical symptoms. There's more, of course, that can be related. Um, and a lot of this is related to other hormones as well. You know, I mentioned not being able to sleep through the night. That can be a blood sugar issue that is connected to your cortisol and melatonin balance. So it is all interwoven. Um, but some of these symptoms, if you have them, can indicate just a um, first step, first line of defense of where you might want to investigate. So the, those are symptoms that you may, may have from blood sugar issues, but I wanted to talk to you, especially today, about how to measure your blood sugar, and that is through a very, very simple glucometer or a little glucose measuring device. Now, I have one. I've had one for years. I carry mine around in a little pack, pouch like this. I go months, if not years, if not of not measuring my blood sugar. Then I go through periods where I'm really monitoring my food and looking at how my sugar is responding. And the reason why I love being able to measure your blood sugar is this little monitor. I'll show you what mine looks like. This little monitor is maybe 30 bucks. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it at your local pharmacy. I'll list a couple down below. I actually don't know if the exact one that I have is still available, um, but if it is, I'll link it in the description box below. Um, but this very quick and easy little monitor um, for quite cheap is a great indirect way of measuring even potential insulin resistance. To actually measure insulin, you have to go into the lab, do a full blood draw, be fasting, check your insulin. Um, you may end up having to do a glucose tolerance test also where you drink a sugary drink and have to measure every hour at the lab. So there's some complicated tests that you can do at the lab, but this is such a simple, easy little way to look at how is your blood sugar doing? How high is it going after certain experiences like exercise or stress situations? Um, how high is it going? And then like I mentioned, how quickly is it dropping? We want it to be flexible, meaning your blood sugar comes back down to baseline um, relatively quickly, but not too quickly. So everything is about balance, right? So 
Um, today, I'm going to explain to you some markers in terms of what numbers to look for. And these are going to be different than what your conventional doctor says, things that Dr. Google might say, um, things that even an endocrinologist might say. Why? Because in naturopathic medicine, we want to look at how the body is functioning and how you are doing now and where, what direction you're moving into, not waiting until you have full-blown diabetes. So in a conventional lab, um, you know, fasting blood sugar will often say, I think 70 to 99 or 70 to 100 is normal. So if you go to your primary care doctor or your family um, physician and you're at 98 for your fasting blood sugar, they'll say, oh, you're good. You don't have diabetes. You're within reason. Whereas for me, for one of my patients, if they were above 90, I would definitely be a little concerned and we would start working on why is your blood sugar high? What can we do? How can we monitor and adjust your diet? and we'd want to look at that before it turns into actual pre-diabetes or actual diabetes. So with that said, um, the numbers that I like to look for are for fasting blood sugar. That means you haven't eaten anything for 12 hours at least and often it's your blood sugar first thing in the morning and I want that number to be around 80 to 90 and it's that's going to be lower than what a lot of you have been used to looking for or what your doctors have told you so 80 to 90 is a good um, nice stable fasting blood sugar number now after you have eaten a meal you can measure your blood sugar um, about an hour after you've eaten and in a a perfect world that number should not be above 140 now I will tell you just for funsies because I love collecting data about myself I have tried different foods I've measured my blood sugar an hour after and you know even healthy sugars I've seen go up to as high as 200 I think I had um, a gluten-free vegan donut. It's not sugar-free, so there's you know there's carbohydrates in there, there's natural sugars in there, and it went up to almost close to 200. It was the highest number I'd seen in a really long time. This was a while back uh, when I was testing, and it was a real eye-opener because it's easy to trick ourselves into thinking, oh, it's vegan, it's gluten-free, it's refined sugar-free, um, but. I'm not saying those things are bad, but you the beauty of this little monitor is that you can check how does this affect my body. So it's the same thing for other healthy foods. Maybe a particular type of fruit is great for somebody and for another person, you know, another option is better. So this is all about using this tool to actually even customize and individualize your medicine and your care a little bit more. So um, generally speaking, an hour after you eat, blood sugar should peak at about 140 or less. Two hours after you eat, you can check again, and it should come down to about 120 or less. And then three hours after your meal that you're checking, it should come back down to baseline, to 80 to 90. Now, those numbers that I just gave you, I will put in the description box, but I want to um, clarify that this is sort of general um, good healthy blood sugar. Now, if somebody is really trying to maybe lose weight or really heal their insulin resistance, there are cases where somebody um, may not want that peak to be even as high as 140. Maybe 120 is their max, or maybe you wanna keep your blood sugar under 100 and keep it nice and steady. Now, I will tell you, when I am eliminating all sugars, and including fruit, I don't do this all the time, I think fruit is very healthy and appropriate for many people, so I'm not an anti-fruit person, I'm just a pro-individualized care person, um, but when I am mainly eating uh, sort of protein, vegetables, healthy fats, generally speaking, and I have been diligent about measuring my blood sugar, again, just for funsies to see how my body's doing, I have seen that blood sugar go no higher than 100, even stay in the 90s. So I actually have been doing this 
Um, partly because of my own health, because of the current climate, um, knowing that sugar is not good for me. I have a past history of sugar addiction, so I do know that my metabolic health and my blood sugar resiliency is not as tight and as healthy as it should be. So for me, my goal is always to keep sugar out of my nutrition. So I've been doing a pretty good job, um, mostly sticking to protein, veg, and fat. Um, and I had a little treat for myself maybe two weeks ago and I had some french fries. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna enjoy this, shame-free, guilt-free, but I am gonna measure my blood sugar and I wanna see what this is doing to um, my blood glucose. And it went up to about 153, was at an hour after I had eaten. And then it did a pretty good job of coming down. It was a, came down a little bit more slowly than I would have liked, but it did eventually come down. However, what was interesting is that the next day I measured my fasting blood sugar and I'm pretty good about it being 80 to 90 in my fasting, especially if my nutrition is um, on point. But that very next day, my fasting blood sugar was in the 90s. And it was just for that one day, so it wasn't worrisome, but it was quite interesting to see the lasting effect that those french fries had on me. And that's not to say I'll never have french fries again or that french fries are the devil or you know anything like that but it is very interesting to see how it affects our bodies and what it might do to us long term um, and it just helps us have a better relationship with our food with our environment with our um, own bodies so I think it's a really really valuable tool and you know just very quickly this is my little gadget this is really the monitor right here that goes on top I keep my little tabs in here the strips that measure your blood sugar and the little strips look like this and you stick it in this little slot and that goes in and you can't see but there's a little display here and a little picture of a droplet shows up and then I have um, this little guy and you prep it and I don't know if you can hear it'll make like a little snapping noise and there's a tiny little lancet or needle in there and so what you do is just go against your finger, I won't do it now, but just a tiny little prick, it creates ever the smallest little blood droplet, and then you dab it onto this little strip, and then you get your reading. So it's very easy. Now, sometimes I like for myself or patients to gather as much data as possible. So if you wanted to see what was really affecting your blood sugar, you can do it first thing in the morning, before and after exercise, before and after meals. So the scale that I gave you earlier, I think I might have forgotten to mention that you should take it before your meal and then one hour after, two, hour, two hours after, three hours after, and then before bed and then again um, the next morning. And then if you wanted to step that up even more, and this is quite excessive, I'm not saying you have to do this, but this is if you wanted to just collect all the data, you can do that same monitoring with different types of food, whether it be foods that maybe are more of a splurge, or you may wanna even test out different fruits or different food combinations. So like I said, it's quite valuable, quite interesting, um, and very, very easy, most of all. So who doesn't love that? So I hope you found this helpful. If you know of any family members or friends who you think might enjoy this video or find this information helpful, please, please share this video with them. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and be sure to comment below if you have any questions or comments you know even gentle kind compassionate criticisms are of course always welcome because we're here to do better and we want to provide you with the best information possible and we want to do better for you guys so feel free to leave any comments below um, with kindness uh, and all are welcome so please subscribe to our channel hit that little bell um, and it'll give you notifications of when we upload we're trying to get back onto um, a more regular schedule we've definitely been feeling the pandemic and our schedules got a little bit wonky and we had some life things to handle and we're still kind of getting our footing back in the door um, but we will be back to weekly videos as much as possible so hit that notification button so you will be alerted when we do upload and thank you so much for watching we love you guys we love our community and we'll see you back here soon take care